Jai Hind. That is my idea of India. It is adopted as a greeting by the armed forces. No religion, no casteism, no creed, no color, only country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was requested by the organizers to capture our country's kaleidoscopic nature by sharing th some thoughts of my idea of India. Besides thoughts on idea of India, two words, communalism and divisiveness, find a prominent mention in the request emailed to me. These words were supposed to be linked to my experience in the army till I retired as the deputy chief of army staff and later as former vice chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University. I will address both. What is my idea of India? It is given by the word idea. I for inclusive nature, D for diverse nature of the country, E for equitable treatment to everybody, gender, citizen, religion, these don't matter. And lastly, affirmative action. Affirmative action has long been uh, displaced by a word called appeasement. Appeasement has several fault lines. There's a vast difference between the two. Affirmative action is when you pull up somebody without hoping for something in return. What is appeasement? Appeasement is when you try and help somebody hoping against hope for a return favor. If appeasement of the minorities is incorrect, can appeasement of the majority be condoned? I don't think so. I was uh, insulated from communal experience because of the fact that my family confirms to the Sufi order, which is the softer face of Islam. Later on, during my service with the army, I never had to face anything which smelt of communalism at all. So I've had a very insulated upbringing. I have not been affected by communalism. And this is something which I am very proud of. Unfortunately, recently, with the advent of the social media and its derived anonymity. You are anonymous. People have been given free license to air what they feel like. And I'm very sad to say that this has also affected a minuscule proportion of the armed forces retired officers. Social media, both fake and otherwise, has fanned the winds of suspicion and discrimination. And this trend is very much on the rise. It is not uncommon in social media when anybody articulating a dissenting view is dubbed anti-national. 
It is my fond hope that this is a passing phase. From my service in the Army, I can say with conviction that a gust of wind cannot approve, uh, cannot uproot something which is flexible. For example, a bamboo tree which is strong and deep rooted. Every gust of wind results in a sway and what happens to the bamboo? It bends but doesn't get uprooted. 